What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are here to talk about <laughs> most men's favorite <laughs> subject, boobies. But it's everybody's favorite subject because men watch these videos because their wife or their girlfriend is looking for breast augmentation. Um, and girls watch these videos because they're looking to do it themselves. And there's not a lot of people that answer the questions. I know I reached out to a lot of people back when I first started getting into training. Um, questions about breast augmentation, getting back into it, and we're going to cover all those right now. But there's not a lot of people that are willing to answer the questions, and that really stinks because as, in fitness, we always try and help each other. As coaches, we try and help um, our clients. People reach out with questions all the time about fitness. We're willing to help you with that. Why aren't people willing to help with breast augmentation questions? So Jen and I are, and we're going to answer some of your questions right now. So, and also, keep in mind, most of the time, women are asking about these, let's, I, I personally coach a lot of lifestyle people, I don't coach any bodybuilders, I mean, some of my guys want to bodybuild, some of my girls want to get bigger, um, but, you know, when you're losing weight, your boobs are adipose tissue, they're fat, so when you lose weight, unfortunately, you're going to lose it here, and that is the only body part that you can't build up, like, you can build up your tush, but you can't build up here, so, typically, if you want to feel more confident, sexy, symmetrical, Especially if you are building down here, it's like you, I mean, there's, I don't think there's obviously anything wrong with it. Like, no, not at all. I, I'm, I'm so happy that I did it. So, Same. what? Um, why don't you go first and okay. then I'll go. What is one of the questions that you get? Um, so the biggest question that I get is, when can I work out again? And I did a bunch of videos on my channel regarding this, but the big thing with getting back into breast augmentation, your doctor might not under understand what you do for fitness. So whether it be bodybuilding or powerlifting or strongman or CrossFit, you're gonna have different a different timetable for your recovery. Um, I know that's a little bit vague, but the best thing you can do, honestly, and I can only say this now, being that I've kind of dabbled in all realms of fitness, the best thing that I was able to do was get into, number one, obviously body weight stuff first, a lot of lower body, um, again, listen to your body because I thought glute bridges would be fine um, with no weight and they actually irritated me a little bit because I have an internal bra. Um, but body weight's up first, but then bodybuilding, the machines, the cables, um, very light free weights, that kind of stuff as tolerated, which is huge. If you feel anything, just stop. There's always tomorrow or next week. But I got back into it probably about week five. I was able to do some body weight stuff and then I've progressed since then. And I am 10 weeks close up today. Oh, nice. So <laughs> that's where I'm at. So for me, it's a little bit different. So uh, my first surgery, so we can talk about how many we'll surgeries we've had. We'll talk about how had. many surgeries. Yeah. Uh, my first surgery, because um, I was literally like flat, like nothing. Like there was no point in me wearing a bra. Um, and uh, so my first surgery was back in 2007. And my recovery, like it took me probably about a week or so before I could even do cardio. And then just because of scar tissue and all that other stuff, like you just don't want to aggravate anything. And then it took me uh, probably about three weeks before I actually did any body weight, I mean, any uh, leg workouts, and then like six weeks before I did any upper body. Now, I've had a couple surgeries since then, and my recovery time is a little bit less, so I still take a week before I do cardio, no less than that, um, and then after two weeks is when I started training lower body, um, oh, wow. and, and going actually heavy, like on hack squats and stuff like that was three weeks, um, and then upper body only because... Um, they had a ready cut, so mine are under the under the muscle. So uh -huh. the first time, it's like I remember after six weeks, I tried to do a pull up and I felt sheer pain. I can't even imagine doing a pull up right now. Yeah, and uh, but literally after probably like two weeks, I was doing lateral raises. Three uh -huh. three weeks, I was doing lateral raises and stuff like that. Okay. Not really any lat pull downs, more rows, and nothing above the head. I don't do presses anyway. Um, so for me, it was a little shorter, okay. um, just because. And I've also had quite a few of them. So I went from like completely flat to a B, and then when I put on more weight, because I've been bulking for like eight years, um, when I put on more weight, I went a little bit bigger, and then I had a problem with one of the surgeries that I had back in California, so then I got them redone, and okay. now that's, that's where we're at right now. And mine, like I said, are, mine are under the muscle, uh, yours mine are... Mine are over. How many surgeries is that done? Is that four? Technically five. Technically five with the issue. The, and then because the, there was, okay. the, I actually had two in... And do you want to talk about that too? The, your about. issue? Um, well, for me, that I... That was interesting. So for me, because I'm so lean in my upper body, um, I, I developed scar tissue. So on this implant, so the implant, there's literally like skin and 
implant. So I would I developed scar tissue, um, and it had nothing to do with how much time I took to go back. Um, it's just even when I did take longer, the one of the times that I did take longer, I still developed it. Um, so right now, I still have a little bit of scar tissue. I actually get body work done, and it really breaks it up. Oh wow. Um, really breaks it up. So I notice a total, a huge uh, difference. And it's been three years since my last, two years since my last surgery. Okay. So, um, so I've had four. My first one, I wasn't really into fitness. I was just kind of dabbling in the gym. It was right before I got married. So it was also 07. Okay. Um, it was September of 07. So around the what, same time. All of yours were, over? My first one was under. Um, but I didn't really feel anything significant. I didn't do, I had no business doing pull-ups at that time. Like I was a cardio junkie. Um, I hadn't even started the P90X realm yet. I did that for years. Um, that was post breast augmentation, but I did get into doing pull-ups and stuff when I was over the muscle. My second surgery wasn't until my daughter was born and I got into CrossFit. So I had already gone to regionals for the first time as a CrossFit athlete. And that was definitely hard to get back into. Um, I noticed also that the doctor didn't know what I did when I said I wanted to get back into the gym. I meant I wanted to throw a 150 pound barbell over my head and he thought that I was going to be doing like lateral raises lateral and, dumbbells. and, and dumbbells. Not saying there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> and it's fine, but make sure your doctor knows exactly what you intend to do when you get back into the gym. So that was number two. Um, my third surgery was awesome. So we did a, it was called a cadaver. Um, it's kind of like an internal bra, but also very different. Um, it was more of a reconstructive surgery. The doctor was wonderful, but my level of fitness, I swear I tore my implants apart, and I said I liked them, but they, I was having issues with how they looked, and I had had a conversation with Chris, and we said that when I was done competing, officially throwing in the towel, I would do it one more time. Hopefully this is my last time. My fourth surgery um, was with Dr. Revis down in South Florida, and he put in an internal bra and I just am obsessed with how they sit right now. I took it very easy. I'm still not even at 100% with training. I'm 10 weeks post-op. Um, took about five weeks before I got into the gym at all and it's as tolerated. I think about a week and a half ago I did upper body for the first time and you had mentioned lateral, or not lateral raises, um, lat pull downs. When I do them right now because I'm trying to make sure that I maintain some of my muscle um, I'm just not hitting full extension. I'm kind of like limiting my range of motion, but I'm still able to get the contraction of the muscle, which is really important. Um, I'm just being very, very careful, but I am getting back into most of my normal training. Upper body is lightweight, and the last probably week and a half is when I started pushing my lower body a little bit more. So I'm actually like exhausting my lower half finally. <laughs> so then let's good. also talk, because this is a question that uh -huh. I get asked a lot. Um, training chest. I'm never going to train chest again. Sorry if you like watching my bench press videos. <laughs> okay, but technically, you having implants over the muscle, there's nothing wrong with that. But if Correct. you have implants under the muscle, you should not. So I don't let any of my girls that have implants train chest if they have implants under the muscle. Because okay, you can cause fair. a lot of that damage. That's fair. Um, with the internal bra, that's why I don't want to train chest anymore. There's also no reason for me to if I'm not competing. I feel like there's no reason for me to build up my chest muscles. Um, I don't like the way my pecs started to look. With the um, line, you mean? Yeah, and because I was so overdeveloped and I have shoulder issues, my body overcompensates from one side to the other. So I had one pec that was way more overdeveloped. So when I was working with the doctor, I said, like, I wanted to get rid of that line. And he definitely, like, I'm symmetrical now. So he was actually able to scrape and, like, lift my implants up. So we're covering that line. So hopefully the pecs will go down a little bit. I want that to happen. You guys might not want to, but my intention is not to train chest anymore. I don't have to, so I'm not going to. Yeah, and I always tell my girls, I mean, I have a couple girls that just like, and they don't have implants, that just like training chest. Yeah, they just I like mean, I get it. I love it. Right. It's empowering, yeah. but... But um, you technically don't have to. Yeah. Like, unless you're a female bodybuilder that needs striations yeah. when you do your side chest, like, there's really no point in doing exactly. it. Exactly. So. so another big one is with... Like I said, my first surgery, I was under the muscle, and I had gotten into CrossFit and was highly competitive while I was under the muscle. And the big thing that I noticed, especially with mostly body weight stuff, but when I would do like a muscle up or a push up, I would press, and my implants would go all the way to the side, and you'd see like beautiful striations and pec muscles. But you'd my see the implant, physical like, implant would flatten and go to the side underneath my armpits. 
it was not the prettiest thing to look at. And I, I would ask people not to take pictures of me while I was doing these movements because it was, to me, if I felt embarrassed and very highly self-conscious about it. Um, do you find any issues with that when you have people chaining chest? Are you chaining chest because you're under the muscle? Yeah. So the one thing that I did have is I don't com I'm I'm done competing. Also, um, I just announced well, I didn't why. Know that. Yeah, I'm done. I'll, I'll tell you guys yeah. why in this video. But um, I would notice in my uh, like side pose, like uh -huh. if I pushed a little bit, oh, that that implant you uh, you would see it. Okay. And then in my like front when I do like my little superhero pose. Yeah one of them, and normally the one with the scar tissue, you would see it kind of like flatten out. Okay. One thing that I do like about uh, Chris Kurosami, he's my um, uh, surgeon in Vegas, um, I get the most compliments, yes, from guys, but even from a lot of girls, and even sometimes the way the guys compliment is not very douchey. It's like, Jesus, I can't believe how natural and how like you can't, like it really looks like natural boobs, okay. even though I'm a bodybuilder, so, um, and it's under the muscle, so they still like fall perfectly. Okay. Um, but I am not competing anymore. I made the announcement. I got my pro card. I've been competing on and off for 15 years. I cannot believe I have a 15-year-old son. I've been competing since eight months after he was uh, born. But um, the reason why, and I'll keep it real short and sweet, is I've been on my own since I was 16. I'm going to be 46 in less than a week, two weeks. Um, and I've li literally never really gone on a vacation. I wouldn't even count my honeymoon. That's a story. <laughs> then two other vacations that were not vacations. So my goal is that I want to go on vacation. And I love my job. And if I'm going to go on a vacation once or twice a year to like a tropical island, whether it's with a guy that I'm dating or whatever, my future guy, um, I want... I, I don't want to take off a lot. So if I'm having okay. to take off for competition and then I'm having to take off again to go on a vacation, for me that's too much away from my clients because I love yeah. what I do. Um, plus, the big thing for me is the ultimate goal, right? The ultimate goal when you compete is to be the best, right? Yes. Yeah. So the ultimate goal in bodybuilding is to make it to the Olympia stage and be Miss Figure Olympia. I don't want to do physique because I don't want striated glutes and I don't want to get much bigger. I mean, I like my size now, maybe my legs and my ass a little bit bigger, but they'll never give me Miss Figure Olympia because of my tattoos. They've never said that, okay. but I know they won't. They want like pretty princess. I gotcha. And I want to keep my femininity, so I'm always going to stay in my version mm -hmm. of figure, my superhero version of it. So if I can never be Miss Figure Olympia, I don't want to go just to say I went to the Olympia and yeah. made top three or top five. Right. So what's the point? Everything I do, I do with purpose. I respect that. So I'm just, right now, I just want yeah. to train my clients, enjoy my kids, and uh, go on vacations. Yeah, that's I love that, and I respect that so much. Done. Uh, you just have to like know where you're at in life too. The other thing is for me, really big was my I you know I have a lat tear. Yeah. Um, that seems to be the most limiting. Not the labrums, believe it or not, I have bilateral labrum tears. But my lat is what is most limiting. And knowing that I like deadlifting is really painful. Um, there's a lot of movements that I really can't do. But when I went to World's Strongest Man when I was in Myrtle Beach. A lot of people were coming up to me asking me like how I felt about not competing. Don't you want to do it again? I love competing. It's amazing to me. But the longevity, of, like the health and f the health of the fitness that I do, is the most important. So if you were to take that away, if I was to be so crippled that I could not do any of this anymore, that would be such a mental funk for me that I like. It's not. I, I just the depression that would set in is just enough set. Yeah. So. I want to be able to do this for the long term. It's my aunt therapy. Which my, I, I mean, it. I hope that one day my daughter gets into it. She's into gymnastics. But I hope that we have that one day. But if I cripple myself now, later on, it's all over. I have yeah. nothing left. So that is sometimes the overall intention of life and knowing that you want to be able to do this for the long haul is more important. So that was like my piece. Yeah. And I'm okay with that right now. So, and I'm gonna be okay with that forever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we want to bring you guys content. Yeah. We want to enjoy our workouts. So that's the whole point. Yeah. Of like this, this whole... is fun for me. YouTube is fun for me. Being healthy and enjoying fitness is fun for me. So that's the most important. Yeah. All right. All right. So I hope you guys liked this video. I hope it was um, informative. Um, if you do have questions, I was just gonna say we that. love answering questions. And every time we're together. We go back through these videos and we pull the questions from them and we answer more questions. So if you do have questions, you can comment below. You can always DM us on Instagram, um, KGRMSFB for me. Jenna Gary 7877, date of birth. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then when she comes back out in uh, uh, August, we will answer those we questions. Could. Yeah, we can make another one, a follow-up. Absolutely. So yeah, we'll be together again in August. So, oh, so excited. Ask your questions now because 
we'll hit them up soon. Yep. So I hope you guys like the video. Hit that button. Click it. Um, subscribe to the channels, and we will see you guys next time.